This video will review Euler's formula for complex exponentials. So we have a complex exponential here, e to the plus or minus i k x. It's an exponential because it's e to the something, and complex because we have i, the square root of negative 1, up in our exponent. So according to Euler's formula, this fairly abstract looking function, not really sure what it looks like, e to the plus or minus i k x. Um, this is used a lot in physics for what we would call plane wave functions, functions which kind of start somewhere in a plane and just kind of uh, progress uh, along that plane. But Euler's formula says that this function can be broken down into the following components of cosine kx plus or minus i sine kx, where the plus and minus would be the same on each side. Okay, so according to our video on complex numbers earlier in this playlist, this means that the real part of a complex exponential is equal to cosine kx, and the imaginary part, the part that we multiply times the square root of negative 1, the imaginary part is equal to sine kx. So since these are sines and cosines, you'll note that if we add 360 degrees to a sine or a cosine, you just get back to the same value of the function. So this means that e to the i kx plus 2 pi, that's going to equal e to the i kx. So this means our function is periodic. It's repeating itself every so often. And additionally, if we look from our uh, video on complex numbers and our video on uh, trigonometric functions, trig identities, we note that the magnitude of a complex number is the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, and then we take the square root. And that would be equal to cosine squared kx plus sine squared kx square root. But we also know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if we take the square root of 1, that just gives us 1. So at all times, the magnitude of our complex exponential is just equal to 1. So it has a magnitude of 1, and it's repeating itself every 2 pi radians, or 360 degrees. So what this kind of sounds like is a unit circle. So we start off at some angle theta. And then as we increase the value of x, our real part being the x-axis and our imaginary part being the y-axis, as we increase this value of x, we just keep rotating around this circle, where our theta here, our angle that we have from the plus x-axis, is just equal to k times x, where this radius here, the magnitude, our distance from the origin in the complex plane is equal to 1. All right, and so we also have from the definition of the real and imaginary parts of complex numbers, we can solve that the cosine of kx is equal to 1 half e to the i kx plus e to the minus i kx. So that's neat. So we can decide, we can, uh, what's it, express? We can, I guess, express cosine in terms of complex exponentials because sometimes you'll get an integral or something with cosines that might look hard to do, but it's easy to integrate and differentiate uh, exponentials, and it's less easy to do so for various powers of sine and cosine. And therefore, sine also, sine can be expressed as 1 over 2i e to the i kx minus e to the minus i kx. So sine and cosine can both be expressed in terms of complex exponentials. So we have its complex conjugate. It's going to be just taking the negative of the exponent. Complex conjugate. Remember, we just anywhere we find square root of minus 1, we substitute negative square root of minus 1 in there. So its complex conjugate is equal to e to the negative i k x. So itself times its complex conjugate, which is equal to the magnitude squared, that's also going to be equal to 1. So this is a relationship that comes up quite a bit in quantum mechanics, which is a fairly uh, important relationship. Okay, so we mentioned we have this unit circle, and as the value of x increases, we just keep rotating around this unit circle. So e to the i0, that's where x equals 0. We're along the plus x axis, an angle of 0 degrees. 
So that's just one entirely real along the real axis. E to the i pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. That's along the plus y axis here, where the real part is 0, the imaginary part is i. E to the i pi, that's going to be 180 degrees, or negative 1 along the real axis. So e to the i pi equals negative 1. And this is actually the basis of what's called Euler's identity, which mathematicians, for some reason, find to be a very interesting and beautiful identity. Ask a mathematician about Euler's identity. I'm sure they'll talk to you for several minutes about it. You have e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Then at 270 degrees, 3 pi over 2 radians, we're down to the negative y axis, the negative imaginary axis, negative i. And finally, e to the i 2 pi is 360 degrees. We're back on the plus x axis at plus 1. So that's Euler's formula. Complex exponentials uh, are periodic. They have a magnitude of 1. Uh, them multiplied by their complex conjugates gives you 1. And they are expressing these complex exponentials in terms of their real part, cosines, and their imaginary part, sines.